Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jono. Welcome back to my game engine series. So, last time we mentioned that it's probably a good idea, while Hazel is still kind of early on in development, to actually talk about pre-compiled headers and actually start using pre-compiled headers. So that's what we're going to do today. If you didn't catch the previous episode, definitely watch it there. That's where we actually set up that event system that we planned in the episode before that. Um, but yeah, today's gonna be all about pre-compiled headers. Now, I did last week just make a video about pre-compiled headers in the C++ series, so check that out. Um, the reason I did that is because obviously pre-compiled headers are more than just applicable to this game engine that we're building. Um, and I wanted to make a more generic video that's just about how they work and why we want to use them. So definitely check out that video if you're not sure what a pre-compiled header is, because I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining it here. That's like a 20 plus minute video about pre-compiled headers anyway. Um, so instead of really talking about what they are in this video, we're just gonna go ahead and implement them. Um, so yeah, watch that video first if you haven't already, and then let's just jump into implementing pre-compiled headers. So looking at all of our Hazel source here, um, there's obviously a bunch of stuff uh, that we're going to end up using that requires the use of many kind of standard library things. Like for example, we're including memory here um, in events, uh, you know, we're including string, we're including functional, all of, the th all of these things can be, you know, string stream, all of these things can, mo can be moved into a pre-compiled header. Um, and of course, this Hazel project is quite young at the moment. We're not even using like other data structures like Vector, for example. Um, so it's a really good idea to actually create that pre-compiled header now because we don't have too many source files, which means we don't need to spend too much time actually editing things, um, which is quite nice. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, under source, I'm actually going to make a new file which I'm gonna make a header file and a CPP file. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call it hzpch, so hazelpch.h, add. And then also um, we need to make a C++ file called hzpch.cpp. This will include our hzpch.h file. Um, this is needed for Visual Studio because Visual Studio pre-compiled headers require a source file which includes the pre-compiled header, whereas other compilers like Clang and GCC do not. Um, and then over here, this is gonna be our pre-compiled header. So the first thing I wanna do is, um, if we're actually in Windows, um, so if hz platform Windows, I'm actually going to include windows.h because that's definitely going to be needed and that's just something that we wanna have available to us if we're kind of, if Windows is actually defined. Um, this is something that does belong in a pre-compiled header. However, obviously not for all platforms. Um, we could make we could make a pre-compiled header um, be separate for each platform. I'm not going to bother with that. I don't think that's 100% necessary. But um, maybe Windows specific uh, or other platform specific um, headers can actually be uh, included in this PCH with this kind of if def. And then over here we'll put common stuff. So stuff like I/O stream, stuff like memory, um, you know, utility, um, algorithm. I'm not gonna put too much stuff here. Functional, what else do we have? Um, and then, you know, data structures like string, um, vector, probably unordered map, unordered set. I don't wanna waste too much time here. We'll kind of add stuff to this as we need them, of course, but this is probably a good set. Um, I think we also used uh, stream as well. Probably makes more sense this to be um, with string like this. But anyway, um, that's really a, a generally a good um, idea of what we actually need. If we go through this, so string functional, I'll start removing them as well from here because we don't need them. Um, string stream, uh, string stream. We can just include the break and bold header in header files themselves, by the way. It doesn't just need to be in a CPP file. Um, going through this, cool, 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 cool. Uh, memory we have, um, yeah, that's about it. Cool. Okay, so there's our pre-compiled header. It's got everything we need. Now let's go ahead and add it to pre-make. So in Hazel, I'm going to just kind of open that pre-make file here. And we're gonna talk about what we actually need to add to our projects, um, or specifically the Hazel project to actually use PCHs. So the first thing we need to specify is which header file is our PCH. So we can just write PCH header and then the name of the header file, which is hzpch.h, like that. That means use the Hazel PCH file, right? Um, and then for Visual Studio, because it actually needs to create um, a PCH file as well, we need to actually type PCH source. Now this will be excluded on platforms in which we don't need this, or rather for compilers, for projects that we generate, well, we actually don't need this, but for, for Visual Studio we do. 
Um, so we don't have to put this under like, you know, filter system windows or anything. It will just be ignored um, on other kind of uh, platforms. Cool, so, and then here we actually need to specify the full path. So Hazel source and then hzpch.cpp, okay? So that is kind of the equivalent of us going ahead and saying, um, you know, hey Visual Studio, please create my precompiled header file. Um, and then this is the equivalent of kind of just going into our project and being like, hey, you know, I'm going to use PCHs and it's going to be hzpch.h, okay? So that's what that is all about. And let's not save our changes here. Okay, cool. So that's all we need to write. Again, I've just done this for Hazel. Um, if you kind of end up with substantial sandbox application, you can do that for sandbox as well. But for now, that's what we need. So let's rerun our generate projects file. There we go. It's done everything successfully. If I, if I reload everything now, um, we should be able to right click here and see that this is now marked as create and that in our kind of uh, project settings, this is marked as use and hzpch is the precompiled header to use. Cool. So now let's do a clean build of everything. And of course we get several errors because we need to make sure that that hzpch.h um, file is the first thing that's included in every single CPP file. So at the very top, I'm going to include hzpch. Okay. And this will be done for every single file. Now I think source is actually in our, in, in, in our compiler include paths. Um, yes, it is. So this, that should make it easy. You just need to include that and that's it. Um, so, uh, application and then log.cpp, every single CPP file. Um, we've only got like two though. <laughs> so that's, that's why I wanted to get this, um, done as quickly as possible before this project starts growing a lot. So if we build this again, you can see that we, um, get no errors. It builds successfully and it took, uh, five and a half seconds, by the way. Um, as an example, that, so that's a clean build with precompiled headers. Or rather, let's just do a clean build for fun um, and see how long Hazel takes to build. So with um, precompiled headers, a clean build takes six seconds, okay? Um, and without precompiled headers, so I'll just set precompiled headers to not using. Um, and then I'll right click clean, right click build. You can see it takes 7.6 seconds, so a little bit longer, not that much longer. However, most of the kind of build time improvements are gonna come from just editing individual source files. So if I just kind of, um, I don't know, I could just add a space or something and then hit build again, this one application.cpp file, uh, you can see that it took three seconds to recompile. Um, let's just do that again, just to have a better kind of more reliable uh, timing. It's so about 3.3 3. 3 seconds. Um, and then I will switch this to use precompiled headers. Um, I'll just build everything with this new kind of thing. And then once that is done, I'll add my space back, hit build. And you can see it's quite a bit faster. And then if I remove my space and do my build again, there we go. So consistently faster now that we have precompiled headers and that will only kind of get faster and faster as our project grows in size. Okay, so that's it. You can see how easy it is to actually integrate precompiled headers. It's really not annoying at all because we didn't have to go through the 100 CPP files we had and then add it in, right? Which would have been the case if we had done this later on in the series. So I'm really happy to get this out of the way as quickly as possible. Really, this should be part of your initial project setup for any kind of large project. Um, if you've decided to use precompiled headers. So there we go, we have that now. And then you can see how easy, it, how easy it is to actually do this kind of stuff in pre-make, just PCH header. Um, and uh, what was it? Actually, I just forgot what it's called. Yeah, PCH header and PCH source, and that's all you need. And the PCH source, again, only needed, only needed if you're using MSVC um, as your compiler. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. You can also help support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. Huge thank you as always to all the patrons that make this series possible. Next episode is already up for you guys. Um, and also uh, the development repository that you get access to already has all this stuff obviously written. Um, that's where I implement everything way ahead of the videos. So if you're interested in that, definitely help support the series and check that out. 
I will see you guys next time. I think we're going to finally be able to start talking about windows and like layers and application, kind of how that, in, how that intertwines and just our application run loop and all of that stuff. I think that's going to be the stuff that we focus on next. So finally, we're getting to the point where we might be able to have a window and something on the screen. Um, that's going to be exciting. I'll see you guys in that video. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.